Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Last week I shared my review of the Mac Pro MP30 Mini Excavator. I received quite a few questions. Today I'm here to address some of those queries. At the risk of stating the obvious, let's start by addressing a few common questions. For those new to the world of the Mini Excavator, the answers may provide a better context. The first question is, is renting an excavator a cheaper option? This is an excellent question. Let's break it down. If you've got a specific task in your mind, like digging a trench for a utility line, and you're sure you only need the excavator for a short period of time, renting can be a cost-effective choice. Costs can vary from a few hundred bucks to several thousand dollars, depending on the machine. However, in my case, my projects are not always clearly defined. I can't predict how long I will need the equipment. Plus, with future projects on the horizon, I made the decision to purchase one for added flexibility and long-term utility. Here's another question. In your last video, you mentioned you were going to add a thumb to the excavator. What is that about? Well, for those unfamiliar, a thumb is essentially an attachment that helps the excavator grab and move objects. There are mechanical thumbs that require manual adjustment and the hydraulic ones that offer more control. Each has its pros and cons. The mechanical one is cheaper and less likely to break, but it's less convenient. A hydraulic thumb is significantly more expensive. The hydraulic option provides more control, but it requires additional maintenance it may have more parts that could break down. Another question is, uh, what's the deal with the uh, Kubota engine you mentioned? Kubota is a Japanese company that produces some of the best mini excavators in the industry. I talked about the name brand machines last time. Kubota is a big name brand when it comes to the mini excavator world. Question number four. You mentioned the skid steers and tractors with uh, proper attachments were too expensive. Can you elaborate on that? Absolutely. Skid steers often referred to as bobcats. You can see them everywhere. They're versatile and robust machines. A nice new skid steer can cost upwards to a hundred grand. Dealerships generally do not disclose their new equipment prices. I found this used at 2023 Kubota asking for 47 grand. Now let's shift the gears and, and address the main question. What do you do when you don't have an excavator? Or in my case, the area isn't accessible to the excavator. I got a bunch of the tree roots I need to remove. After watching this video, you will come to appreciate why an excavator is such a wonderful machine it can save your back and all the joints on your body. Pay attention when I was digging the old oak tree's roots. You will see a big surprise I discovered right in the center of the roots. As you can see, working near the fence presents some challenges, especially with the water lines underground. So I had no choice but to resort to the old fashioned way by hand. Here are the tools I used. I started with a shovel and a loper, then progressed to the bigger tools. Eventually, the chainsaw came to the rescue. Despite the annual trimming, these oak roots kept coming back. I decided to tackle them only because of my excavator project. Although at this point, I'm not sure if I should thank or curse the machine. Now let's take a look at this jackhammer. Ever wonder what powers it? It actually is hooked up to a Delta Pro solar generator, which draws its energy from the solar panels. So all that jackhammering, totally free of charge. I'm a huge fan of this solar generator. In fact, I've even used it with my welder. 
But that's a topic for another video. I use the big arsenal of tools, shovel, jackhammer, axe, chisel, loper, post sticker, and chainsaw. Speaking of which, it has always baffled me why a brand new chain wears out after just one route. I ordered this nearly five star rated chains from Amazon, but they seem to lose their edge after a single cut. If anyone has insights on this, please share your insight. Maybe I'm not using it correctly. Anyway, with the chainsaw out of the commission, I had to resort to chisel, hammer, and whatever else I could find to get the job done. Oh, look at what I found. There's a hole in the center of the roots, and there's a giant grub inside. <laughs> My great pyrene wasn't interested, <laughs> so it became a tasty snack for the chickens. I started this ordeal in the morning. By the time I came back in, it was dark outside, about six hours of torture. Look at this, uh, look at like, these roots that came out of there. I think I probably should make a bonsai out of this. The jackhammer took a toll on my wrist. According to Newton's law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So when a jackhammer hits the rocks and the dirt, it also hitting back on the handle with force. Part of the force translates into my wrist. By the time I wrap it up, my back was shut and my wrists were numb. It took me a good two days to fully recover. And that's when I truly appreciated the excavator. What could have been a five, 10 minutes job with the machine turned into a day long ordeal for me. So the moral of the story, sure, you can tackle some tasks without an excavator, but be prepared to invest 20 times or more time and energy. It is time consuming and exhausting. So whenever possible, let the machine do the heavy lifting. Thank you for joining me on this root tangled adventure. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, happy digging.